established the illegality element of that. It's like he had signed agreements or, or Russia had signed agreements stating that as far as they were concerned, Ukraine was a country among other countries. And more than that, they did something even more because when the Soviet Union fell, parts of its nuclear arsenal were still in three other countries, in Belarus, Ukraine, and Kazakhstan. And we worked very hard to persuade those countries, we, the United States and Great Britain, worked very hard to persuade those countries to give their nuclear arsenals back to Russia, because we were very concerned about the threat of nuclear proliferation. So we pressed And they them, did. And, and they, they did. did. Right, and right. In return for that, in 1994, we, Britain and Russia, signed an agreement with Ukraine committing to respect the territorial integrity of Ukraine as it was recognized at the time in return for Ukraine handing back those uh, nuclear weapons. The Russians signed that treaty. The Russians have just violated a treaty that they specifically signed with Ukraine, recognizing it in its territorial integrity as it was in 1994. Who, who signed that on Russia's behalf? Yeltsin. That was Yeltsin. Okay, yeah, so Yeltsin. Putin hypothetically doesn't feel that he's bound by that agreement, but within well, the framework of international law, he is. He is. I mean, he can regard himself however he wants to, but he is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So not only did Russia recognize Ukraine as a country, but it specifically recognized Ukraine in the borders that it had in 1994. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, all right. So, so let's go to unprovoked. Now, here's a mystery. This could have happened at any time over the last 20 years or any time into the future over the next 20 years, but it happened now. And there are accusations of all sorts flying around on the political front in the West about why now, as far as you're concerned, why now? And, and is there a lesson in the fact that it's now for us. So let me, I'll, I'll go into this a little deeper. I read a couple of papers by Victor Davis Hanson yesterday, and he made a claim that was approximately the following, which is that um, the, the Democrats, for example, under Obama, talked about Russia in a negative way, but really didn't do anything about Russia, whereas Trump gave Putin flattery in some sense, but actually did something about the potential danger they posed. And I'm not claiming that that's a valid argument or an invalid argument. It's just something that I read when I was trying to prepare for this. Why now? Because it is being politicized like mad in, in, in yep. the West. We think, well, Putin is taking advantage of our perceived weakness. And there's partisan reasons for that. And maybe there's deeper philosophical reasons for that. Those need to be separated. As far as you're concerned, why now? And then we do need to get to also maybe why we how we stepped into this, even if it was only 20% our fault or 2%, I don't care. What did we do wrong that made this happen and happen now? So look, the, the question, the, the answer to the question, why now is very, is very hard, I think. And I, this is something that I'm also wrestling with because the, the, what, do we, what we need to explain is the invasion. That Putin has been carrying forward operations to regain control of Ukraine since 2014. Um, he has been pursuing hybrid warfare approaches, pursuing informational operation approaches in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. He's put various forms of military pressure on Ukraine from his occupied territories. Um, right. So it's not exactly now. This is right. actually an extension of a process that's been occurring for a long time. It's an inflection in that process. Now, okay. so what we need okay. to explain this particular inflection, which is a huge inflection, um, but that's actually rather hard. 